Each week, American History TV's American Artifacts visits historic places. During the Civil War, Confederate President Jefferson Davis and his family lived in this mansion in Richmond, Virginia. American History TV visited the house to learn about the Mexican War veteran and U.S. Senator who became leader of the Confederate States of America. Now let's start uh, back at April 4th, 1865. That's when Lincoln was here and uh, Jefferson Davis had left town April 2nd, 1865 at about 11 p.m. The Union Army took over the city and this house on the morning of April 3rd and Abraham Lincoln was here April 4th. Now he came in through the front doors. Uh, of course, just five days after that, uh, General Lee surrendered his army at Appomattox and then uh, on April 14th, Lincoln was shot at Ford's Theater in Washington, died the next day. Uh, Jefferson Davis was captured uh, by the Union Army May 10th, 1865. Now, uh, General Godfrey Weitzel had turned this house into Union Army headquarters the day he got here, April 3rd, and it remained that until January of 1870. So actually, the Union Army took very good care of this house for the most part. This was their home and headquarters for almost five years. Now, in the first week or two of occupation, uh, that, things were a little bit different. There were soldiers and officers coming and going. They were taking little souvenirs from the house. They were sleeping on the floors and in the chairs and on the piano in one case. Uh, so it was, it was pretty chaotic the first couple weeks. But after things settled down here a bit, um, this, this was lived in by a, a succession of U.S. Army generals who took good care of the house. Now, in January 1870, Virginia was readmitted to the United States. So this house eventually went back to the city of Richmond. And of course, the Federal Army left. Uh, the city got it back. The city, in uh, the later part of that year, 1870, sold everything in this house and then turned it into a school. This was a school for 20 years. That's when it suffered damage, <laughs> not during the war, not during uh, the U.S. Army occupation, but w when this is a school. Um, the city wanted to tear it down after about 20 years of being a school and, and uh, replace it with a new building, but it was saved from demolition by a group of women here in town, uh, a group that had originally formed as the Hollywood Memorial Association, uh, preserving Confederate graves in Hollywood Cemetery here, here in Richmond. Um, these ladies kind of reformed into the Confederate Memorial Literary Society, and they took over the house, and they, uh, they fixed it up, and they opened uh, this building as a museum in 1896. Now, it didn't look like this then. Um, in 1896, when this opened, it was the Confederate Museum. You walked around, each room was dedicated to a, a southern state, and you had artifacts relating to that state in each room. Uh, and it was that way for 80 years. And then in 1976, the main museum of the Confederacy opened and all the exhibits and artifacts were, were moved over there. And then this house was shut down for an extensive restoration. So this opened as it is now as a restored historic home in 1988. Uh, the, still the, the, the same group of people, the Confederate Memorial Literary Society, the, the same people, uh, the, the same organization that has owned it since the 1890s. The second floor of a house in this era was typically private living space, and this house is no exception. Jefferson Davis, his wife and children lived on the second floor. So decoratively, the second floor maybe isn't quite as exciting as the first. They weren't trying to impress as much up here. So you'll see furnishings that are older, plainer, a uh, little less expensive, and a little, little bit behind the fashions of the day. So the people that came up here would be, of course, the Davis family family, uh, Davis's private secretary, Burton Harrison, slaves and servants, and people on official business to see Jefferson Davis in his home office, which we'll see in a minute. Um, the, this is the office for Burton Harrison, again, Davis's private secretary, and those on official business to see Harrison would be shown up here. They'd speak with Harrison. He would decide when or if you got to go back and see Davis in the home office. So. 